So I'd like to introduce now Tim Spurway, who's visiting us from our silver sponsor, Chango. And he's a uh, team lead of large-scale large data. data. Yeah. LSD. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to anybody who, gives me a, uh, like that. anybody who gives me a title more than five words at this point is probably going to get it wrong. But he's going to be talking about dancing with big data using Inferno and Disco. So let's give him a big, big round of applause. Thanks. So uh, Chango's an ad tech company, um, and we process a lot of data. And um, so uh, we need to do MapReduce, mostly on logs. Uh, and we've open sourced a, a framework on top of the open source Disco framework called Inferno. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, just to preface it with a talk about Disco, because without Disco, there is no Inferno. Disco is an open source MapReduce platform. Uh, it's implemented in Erlang um, and Python. So the Erlang part, for those of you uh, who don't know Erlang, it's a functional programming language that is really good at distributed systems. Um, and the Python part is what you actually write your MapReduce jobs in. So jobs are written in Python. There's no Java. Uh, I mean, the first question we uh, you know, often get is, uh, how come you're not using Hadoop? Um, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a valid question. Um, there's no XML in, uh, in, uh, Erlang, or in uh, Disco. I mean, you, you take a look at the, the front page on the Apache project for Hadoop, and it's all about you know, writing these uh, you know, yarn applications, and there's like hundreds of lines of Java, and there's descriptions of these XML files, and after you get it installed, you, know, you just download Disco, get it running, and it works. So uh, it, was, you know, it was a fairly easy choice. Uh, we wanted to to try and get something running quickly and see, it, see if it would work. From an architectural perspective, Disco seemed to fit. Uh, Erlang seems like a really good fit for this type of uh, system. Uh, you know, it, it takes care of all those things that, you know, the Beam architecture allows you to, to build systems that are distributed uh, fairly easily and, uh, and all that. So um, why Disco? Simplicity. Uh, it's, you know, a few thousand lines of code of Erlang. Um, the the uh, uh, distributed file system part of the of the of the software is uh, a tag based system. It's built on top of the the Unix or Linux file systems, so it's uh, it's really simple. Um, basically, it's it's a really, you know. Interesting and small framework. So what's Inferno? What we wound up doing is we, we wrote a lot of MapReduce code. So you, know, you write your map, you write your reduce, and we've got a lot, of, a lot of different types of logs and a lot of different types of calculations or queries we want to do. We wound up writing a lot of kind of the same stuff over and over again and thought, you know, is there an easier way to do this? Uh, there's a lot of boilerplate and so on. Um, so Inferno started out as kind of uh, a rule-based approach to doing uh, MapReduce. Uh, we've got some, uh, you know, a lot of uh, types of jobs that, that, we like to, uh, that we like to do. One of the things that we want to do is take logs and uh, populate a data warehouse kind of automatically. So Inferno's running, it's, it's uh, you know, there's rules running in there that uh, are trying to summarize data into, into a data warehouse. Optimistically looking for new data, um, you know, spawning off a MapReduce job to summarize that data and insert it into a data warehouse that are front-end applications, reporting applications and so on, can then go and take a look at and, uh, you know, So Chango's an uh, ad tech company. Uh, we do search retargeting. Um, we're on the exchanges, the ad exchanges. So there's, uh, there's about 10 exchanges we, we're on. Um, we get hundreds of thousands of requests for uh, displaying ads per second. 
Um, this translates into billions of records per day. Uh, and, what, and we've got about you know, 50 to 100 rules that we run regularly um, on this data to, to target different um, dimensions of the data. So we're crunching a lot of data. It's, uh, I've got 50 billion records per day here that we process. That's how many we receive. A lot of those records we go over multiple times. I'll talk about key sets later and a strategy to reduce the number of times you have to go over each record of this data, but it's a lot of data. Um, uh, our cluster has about uh, half a petabyte of uh, storage, which, I mean, that's not that much, but we only keep about two months' worth of data uh, online at, at any given time. So we're dealing with quite a bit of data. Uh, Inferno can, can be used, it has multiple facets. The first facet is uh, it's a rule-based query language. So you want to sum up some, you know, some dimension of your data. You want to select keys and values from certain logs and do summary type queries, uh, filtering and so on. So it allows you to do that. It's a DSL for logs. But also there's, a, there's the use case that we have where we want to summarize the data uh, once, insert that summary data into a data warehouse, and then, um, and then archive it to say, you know, let's not process this data again um, so that we can you know, do the slicing and dicing in a, in a data warehouse. Um, we also use it for distributed computing tasks. Uh, Inferno rules can, a lot of times you just want to do a lot of things to a lot of URLs or, uh, so that's another use case of, uh, of Inferno is just, distributed computing. So uh, we deal with a lot of logs. The first, uh, first kind of version of Chango used queuing systems and stuff like this to try and, to try and summarize data in real time. And, and we quickly you know, got buried under the amount of data we were having to process. So we simplified our architecture into, into log-based uh, uh, systems, uh, and we standardized on JSON. Um, so every single log that we deal with uh, is a JSON log. Uh, every single line is a valid JSON expression, I guess, if you will. Uh, and, um, you know, there's a standard way, like our, our logs are fairly structured. We try and keep naming of fields and stuff across the different types of logs, consistent and so on. And this really pays off. If you spend some time refactoring your data, we found um, you, you know, reap a lot of benefits from that. Um, just to talk about how Disco uh, stores files, it's a distributed file system. You set a replication uh, across your cluster, so a replication factor. And it, it allows you to you know, have every single chunk or log file uh, you know, replicated so that you can use that replication to gain concurrency, really. It's a basic tenet of MapReduce is you really need to have replicated data in order to uh, get concurrency. Um, Disco uses uh, what they call, well, let's talk about Disco for a while, uh, a chunk, which is when you chunk uh, into Disco, it will compress it and you pass it a tag. Now, uh, they call it a blob, so the, the blob is, is just a chunk of data, and your tags, you can have a one-to-many uh, relationship with, between tags and, uh, and data. So uh, each tag uh, can, can hold many blobs of data, and uh, it's fairly flat. I mean, a tag is just a, a string, by convention, they, we use colons within the tag name to uh, you know, denote different parts, like where is this log coming from, what's the date of the log, um, you know, what format is it in, and so on. A lot of the operations in DDFS allow you to work on aggregates of prefixes of tags. So if you wanted to process all of your... Uh, uh, 
So here's a log. Uh, at the very top is the, the tag name, and this is an actual uh, tag we use. Uh, you can see it's from a thing called a collector, and it you know, hints at search data that's for a particular date. Uh, I've simplified a lot of this stuff to uh, protect the innocent, but uh, um, you know, this is a, it's a typical log. That's one line of data in the log, uh, and it's a search on, on Google. Uh, here's an Inferno rule. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, give me, this is a query type uh, search. It's, a, it's saying, give me all the searches in my log um, by data source, by, you know, where did it come from? So we see um, you have source tags, that is where in DDFS am I getting the data? Uh, you have a thing called uh, parts preprocess, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and then you have keys and values. Uh, anyone familiar with MapReduce knows that you know, keys and values are an important part. Uh, during the map phase, your, your data is segregated and hashed out to a number of partitions based on your key. So these are keys that are in the JSON. And then you, in your reduce phase, you sum things up or you aggregate based on your values. Um, I just did this before. Uh, there's actually a bug in the value parts. But um, the idea is uh, you, uh, you, know, you run the rule. Down here is a, a Linux command line or, uh, uh, of you know, executing Inferno, uh, executing this rule. So there's a command line component. You're basically saying, you know, run this minus s. On, this is my cluster. Uh, and you tell it you know, what rule you want to run. Um, the minus R at the end gives you a date range. So uh, Inferno is aware about when we look back at the uh, tag over here. There's the our, by convention we always have a date at the end. So we're able to do and and Inferno expects this kind of structure in the in the tagging so that you can do minus R five will give you five days worth of data and you can index in and select ranges and so on very easily. So that's uh, one simple use case of, uh, of uh, you know, Inferno, and that's the query DSL. You know, give me some, give me a summary of my data. Uh, so, like I said before, uh, Inferno is rule-based. Uh, it has a concept of key sets. Key sets are an abstraction. We found uh, that we, the first version just had rules. And we were finding that we were running the same kinds of uh, operations on the same data, but with kind of different dimensions. And we're trying to you know, cut down on the number of times we have to iterate over all of our data. So a rule can have kind of sub-rules in it. Um, so, so that when you run it, it actually only runs over the log once, but will generate multiple results. And that's, that's a key set. And I won't get into an example of that, but uh, it allows you to you know, really efficiently process your logs into a number of different uh, destinations or get a number of results. <clears throat> so uh, another feature of Inferno is this. Uh, we call them automatic rules. And it's basically a long-running daemon that uh, uh, the rules opportunistically look for new data to work on. They take incoming data, run the rules on it, store it out to a database or you know, back end, and will archive the, uh, the process tags. Um, this is useful for stuff you only want to, you know, that you want to summarize and only get you know, data on once. Um, you specify data sources as DDFS tags. I talked about doing date ranges and so on. Um, and there's we talked about key sets uh, again. Uh, a part in uh, in Inferno is each basically each line of a log. Uh, it's kind of the the lowest 
you know, the lowest value that, that we have. Um, and we talked about the key parts versus value parts and how those uh, correspond to uh, map and reduce. Um, there's a number of other features <laughs> in Inferno. Uh, we're going to run out of time, but uh, there's a lot of other uh, features that allow you to manipulate, filter, or generate uh, more data or less data uh, at the line-by-line -line level. Uh, there's an archiving feature. We touched on this before. Uh, this allows, it's a mechanism built into Inferno that allows you to, uh, you know, only process one log one time. Here's another, uh, here's another, uh, this is uh, an example of an archiving or automatic rule um, that uh, will go over top of a, an impression log, process it, save results to a particular table. Um, if we wanted to in, uh, introduce uh, multiple different destinations for uh, results, we could introduce uh, multiple key sets in here, which would allow you to run over the log once and shoot data out to multiple different tables in your back end. OK, so that was kind of a whirlwind tour. Uh, of Inferno. I hope I uh, explained it okay to you guys. Um, it's Again, it's open source. Uh, it's on Bitbucket. We're going to probably be moving it as well onto Git. A lot of people have been asking for that. Um, docs are on rtfz.org. Uh, and there's Python, uh, or like uh, a group for it as well, in Google Groups. All right. platform. Uh, it's implemented in Erlang um, and Python. So the Erlang part, for those of you uh, who don't know Erlang, it's a functional programming language that is really good at distributed systems. Um, and the Python part is what you actually write your MapReduce. Inferno and Disco. So let's give them a big, big round of applause. Thanks. So uh, Chango's an ad tech company, um, and we process a lot of data. And um, so uh, we need to do MapReduce, mostly on logs, uh, and jobs in. So jobs are written in Python. There's no Java. Uh, I mean, the first question we uh, you know, often get is, uh, how come you're not using Hadoop? Um, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a valid question. Um, there's no So I'd like to introduce now Tim Spurway, who's visiting us from our silver sponsor, Chango. And he's a uh, team lead of large-scale data. data. LSD. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to anybody who, gives me a, uh, like that. anybody who gives me a title more than five words at this point is probably going to get it wrong. But he's going to be talking about dancing with big data using... And we've open-sourced uh, a framework on top of the open-source Disco framework called Inferno, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, just to preface it with a talk about Disco, because without Disco, there is no Inferno. Disco is an open source MapReduce.